Uh, my name is Kathleen Crowther, and I am president of the Cleveland Restoration Society. Uh, but so many people have uh, assisted with pulling together this event, things like a tent, the audio system, these things uh, can be pretty complicated. And uh, we had um, just a, a, a wonderful willingness. John Laird's here from the city. He probably doesn't want to be recognized. But I kind of like saying those names out loud because they're the uh, people that you don't know about so much that can make things happen. So um, our organization, Cleveland Restoration Society, uh, our mission is to preserve, protect, and celebrate Cleveland's heritage. And we believe that our cultural heritage is represented in landmark buildings. Well, yes, of course. But it's also represented in our community's different traditions and histories. And this, this absolutely relates to um, the Ludlow Community Association. Our organization is now 50 years old. We're really t a little too busy to celebrate too much, but 50 years old. Um, uh, and we were a citizens organization uh, started by um, an interracial group of people, which I think is kind of interesting, in 1972, um, concerned with the demolition of landmarks. Our leading program is our Heritage Home Program, 30 years old this year. The Heritage Program was started in partnership with the National Trust for Historic Preservation, and we have the um, enlightened support of the county for the program and the county executive. We operate this program across the county, and we have very close support from the city of Cleveland, and I'd like to recognize the council president, Blaine Griffin, and Deborah Gray, who will speak in a minute. Um, <clears throat> So this Heritage Home Program, you might look into it. Um, we've assisted over 40,000 Cleveland citizens, booked almost 1,000 loans worth $35 million. I can hardly believe that myself. We're also very involved with historic religious buildings and then African-American cultural heritage. And this heritage is the uh, heritage of the majority of Cleveland cities, the Cleveland, Cleveland citizens, because Cleveland is a majority minority city now um, so with the wide with the support of a wide array of funders including the county we are leading this very important project the creation of the african-american civil rights trail in cleveland um, the work to bring equality to black citizens did not just happen in the south it happened across the country and Cleveland played an important role in that struggle, a struggle that continues to this day. The trail will consist of a series of these Ohio markers. You're going to see it. They are beautiful, handsome bronze markers, beautifully crafted. And then uh, each marker will eventually have a QR code so that you know those that are looking at the marker, reading it, can put their phone up to the uh, QR code and go directly to a website which will give you much more information than can be um, put on to um, the marker. And the website is, is uh, pretty well developed. Please, please visit the website. So um, today we're so happy to formally unveil the third marker, recognizing Ludlow Community Association. And this marker particularly, and this ceremony would not have been possible without the County Executive Armin Budish's personal commitment and involvement. So thank you very much, Mr. Budish. <coughs> We're also um, grateful to the Isaacs family. The Isaacs family uh, representatives could not be here today, but the daughters of Bernard Isaac, who was an early pioneer here, um, were in, uh, very helpful. And finally, the program is me um, dedicated to the memory of Kevin Lowry. Mm -hmm. Many of you knew Kevin. He was dedicated to this neighborhood, and he, was, he left our world way too early. More about Kevin later on. Now, um, normally I would hand the mic off to Natoya Walker Minor, who is the chair of the committee, but uh, the Civil Rights um, Trail Committee, but Natoya was called away and cannot be here. So I apologize. But we have some people that are on that committee. If you could please raise your hand and be recognized. Uh, where are you? 
where are you? Oh, they're so shy. Okay, Gwen Chapman, we got Gwen. All right, they're here. This always happens, isn't it? Okay. Now, um, the next section of the program we're going to move into right away. Um, we're going to hopefully reverse order because our um, poet laureate is still looking for our site. Uh, <laughs> so we're uh, crossing our fingers that she's going to make it. Um, so we will first start with uh, Shelley Stokes Hammond. Shelley <coughs> uh, grew up in this neighborhood, and she wrote her master's dissertation on this neighborhood. And she will um, explain to us the significance of the, the neighborhood. Shelley Stokes Hammond, please come forward. Shelley, the daughter of a prominent Cleveland family, daughter of Louis Stokes. So I want to acknowledge Ms. Crowther and elected officials, other dignitaries, and all friends of the Ludlow Community Association. It's great that you're all here. I want to talk about how six decades ago, there was a sea of racial violence across the entire United States. And the Ludlow neighborhood of Cleveland and Shaker Heights was not spared. However, the response of this community was different than in most places. And it resulted in the formation of the Ludlow Community Association. So in addition to the peg house that was bombed right in the area, there had been a long history of housing discrimination. And it was difficult, a difficult task to overcome. This was due in part to the Van Swearingen compatible neighbor policy, which really wasn't very compatible at all. <laughs> it gave teeth to the racially restrictive covenants that were operative until they ran out of gas as LCA Bernard, former LCA board president Bernard Isaac said when Kramer versus Shelley was struck down in 1948 by the U.S. Supreme Court. But still, it continued up to the 1950s. Anybody who wanted to buy a home in Shaker had to get 20 signatures to approve their purchase in the community. Five people to their left, five people to the right, and then 10 people across the street from the house you wanted to buy. So it wasn't an easy decision for whites who decided to stay after the bombing as more and more African Americans were moving in once that ruling was struck down. As Isaac Burnett, Barnett, the first president of the LCA said, he said, one begins to question his judgment. Maybe my neighbors are right. How do I know my property values won't go down? What will happen to the quality of our schools? But then over time, as a fierce advocate for the LCA, he said, I found my voice. Whites in Ludlow had never lived, most of them had never lived or attended school with blacks or even served in the military with them. As Bernie Isaacs explained, we had always seen black people, especially women, riding the Shaker Rapid and occasionally in private automobiles, but we automatically checked them off as servants. So who were the founders of the Ludlow Community Association? They were the Barnetts and the Isaacs, but also the Branches, the Fitches, the Fonaroffs, the Kings, the Ladianis, the Martins, the Masons, the Mazos, the Polsters, the Ritchies, the Seldons, the Spinells, and the Walkers. They were whites, blacks, Catholics, Christians, Jews, who simply wanted the American dream. As LCA founder Dr. Winston Ritchie said, I wanted to live in Shaker because of the excellent schools and because I strongly believed in an integrated experience for my children. I wanted them to be able to compete in the world, to become part of the mainstream, and when they grew up, to have self-confidence and pride in their ability to make it as blacks. I wanted them to know that there are some good whites and some bad ones, just as there are some good and bad blacks. Most of the whites were descended from Europeans who had immigrated to the United States at some point. Blacks in the LCA, however, were of other diverse backgrounds. Some came from the South to Cleveland during the Great Migration, but some came from New England. Some were graduates of historically black colleges and universities. 
others Ivy League schools. All were descended at some point from formerly enslaved persons, with some freed before the Civil War and some that actually fought in the Revolutionary War. Some were Tuskegee Airmen. Professionally, they were dentists, teachers, lawyers, medical doctors, social workers, musicians, librarians, journalists, and more. Working together, these blacks, whites, Christians, Jews, Asians, in their home, where they worked in their homes, their backyards, and schools. And together, the LCA reversed the tide of white flight, blockbusting, and resegregation. There were other pioneers such as Joseph Finley, Alan Gressel, and Carolyn and Bert Milter and Ron Spatrino, who, added, who aided with the housing program, fundraising, and straw buying. Another way to appreciate the significance of the LCI is through the eyes of the children who grew up in the neighborhood during the Civil Rights Movement. When my family moved to the Ludlow neighborhood in 1961, that November, I was 10 years old and in the fifth grade. By then, the LCA had been operative for four years, and it was thriving and soon would engage almost every single household in the community. It didn't take long for me to notice that children in Ludlow spent time ice skating together. My wish for a pair of ice skates came true. So close to my chest, I clutched my brand new pair of skates and I trudged through the mounds of snow piled high on the curvilinear streets of Albion to Beckett to the intersection of Ashwood and Onaway Pond roads to the field of ice. It was then that Ludlow's magical world opened before me. Maybe 40 or 50 children were packed on the ice they were bundled up in colorful ski jackets, woolen coats, knit caps, mittens or gloves, and scarves. I watched them dance, race, twirl, and glide happily on the ice. That was Ludlow, literally and figuratively. Those feelings I just described of children ice skating in Ludlow carried forward to how most children felt about attending Ludlow Elementary School and learning together. Ludlow embodied everything Dr. Martin Luther King envisioned when he said, I have a dream that my four little children will one day live in a nation where they will not be judged by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. But as children, most of us growing up in Ludlow during the civil rights era did not fully comprehend Dr. King's words. We knew how active our parents were in Ludlow with the LCA the PTA, Girl Scouts, Boy Scouts. We knew how much they worked outside of the Ludlow community in Cleveland with the NAACP, the Urban League, the United Freedom Movement, CORE, and more. But most importantly, we knew our parents were each other's friends. And we were friends with our classmates and neighbors. We had to leave Ludlow and grow older to fully appreciate LCA's significance. And the picture got even clearer when we had children of our own. We found ourselves contending with many of the same issues that our Ludlow parents had worked so hard to overcome. But we discovered that we had learned from their role model and the, for the, our parents and the LCA. Many of us have been like ambassadors carrying forward LCA's mission wherever our futures have taken us. Around 2005, the association was beginning to languish. Three individuals of the LCA, Gwen Chapman, Tom Chilinski, and Louis Kalia, worked to revive the LCA in time for the 50th anniversary. That was in 2007. They actually walked door to door to revive interest in getting more active again. And they had an incredible celebration where people came back from states all across the country to reminisce and celebrate. It was around that time that I was inspired to research and write about Ludlow. And fortunately, I was able to get the help of our great libraries around Cleveland, Megan Hayes of Shaker Library, Olivia Hogue of Cleveland Public Library, and Sindelar from Western Reserve Historical Society and um, Nora Blackman of the Kelvin E. Smith Library at Case. 
The Ludlow of the LCIA set an example that was followed by families for the Lomond and Moreland sections of Shaker and the suburb of Cleveland Heights, and for other cities in the United States that were trying to successfully integrate. The community is still engaged in race relations and equity issues. Children growing up in segregated sections of Shaker when we were growing up had an opportunity to benefit from the integration in Ludlow as we went through to Woodbury and Shaker Heights High School. So thanks to the installation of this historical marker today, the Ludlow story will not only be a way of thanking the founders, the pioneers, and the families who played such a vital role in the civil rights movement and beyond, but it will be a model and inspiration for future generations. I've known rivers. I've known rivers ancient as the world and older than the flow of human blood in human veins. My soul grows deep like the rivers. Oh, I've bathed in the Euphrates when dawns were young. I built my hut near the Congo and it lulled me to sleep. I looked upon the Nile and raised the pyramids above it. And I heard the singing of the Mississippi when Abe Lincoln went down to New Orleans and saw its muddy bosom turn all golden in the sunset. Oh, I've known rivers, ancient, dusky rivers. My soul grows deep like the rivers. Good afternoon. I am Honey Bell Bay, the Poet Laureate of Cuyahoga County. I am Honey, and this is my twin sister, Sugar. Uh, it's got <laughs> Sweet parents or teen parents from the 60s, one of the two. We don't <laughs> I don't know. But in all seriousness, when hatred moves, everything becomes dark. But look at where we are now as a community. What's a symbol of love, our mark. See, look at what burst out of the ash. Hatred can only ignite future destiny if we choose not to live in hatred's past, but learn from it and grow from it and dedicate from it so that we never repeat it. From this place together, we rise together as a community. We continue to keep our eyes on the prize. What's birthed out of the ash will last when bombs blast. And years later, we bid adieu to that past. Racial segregation could not interrupt. This was a predetermined integration. This was a predetermined integration when Ludlow was always built to be free, when blacks move in and hatred wants to flee. Housing is a human right, but Shaker knew the pain from the past. With the family's racial tensions were bombs and a blast, but that hatred was ignited, but it could not last. Because love covers all. And when there's love, we will always keep our eyes on the prize. Shaker is the reason why Maya Angelou said, still I rise. You may write me down in history with your bitter twisted lies. You may trod me in the very dirt, but still like dust, I rise. Oh, does my sassiness upset you? Why are you beset with gloom? Cause I walk like I got oil wells pumping in my living room. Just like moons and like suns with the certainty of tides. Just like hope springing high. Ludlow, we rise with me. Ludlow, we rise. Ludlow, we rise. Ludlow, we rise. Thank you. Thank you for setting that tone, honey and sugar. <laughs> okay, now uh, we have some really important public um, officials, elected officials who without whose um, involvement and support this would not be possible. 
and I would ask you just to come up one right after another. I won't introduce all of you, but um, uh, Mr. Executive, yes, you're, you start. You're our king today for helping us so much with the marker, and be careful of Got the cord. Okay. Hello, everybody. Hello. That was not fair to put me to follow Honey Bell Bay. After all, she's our <laughs> poet laureate for the county. Yeah. I don't know. I'll have to talk about that. Um, it's cold out here, uh, and I won't take too long, but uh, it warms all of us uh, to uh, be here at this de dedication of this important marker uh, on this important day. Um, more than a year ago, uh, uh, I met with Kathleen Crowder and Glenn Shoemate and David Brown uh, from the Cleveland Restoration Society, and they came in to tell me why this is important and why the county needs to be involved and needs to be supportive. And they were absolutely right. This is so important. Uh, it's important to all of us. But I will tell you, it's also important to me personally because uh, as a uh, as a man of Jewish faith, uh, uh, the Jewish uh, community has uh, been involved in the civil rights movement from the beginning. And uh, as was mentioned, uh, Mr. Uh, uh, Bernard Isaacs was one of the people who uh, formed the Ludlow Community Association uh, after the bombing uh, here uh, uh, that was so tragic. Uh, Sarah Parks Jackson is here somewhere, I think. There she is in the back. Uh, she's been the lead for the county in helping make this happen. Uh, she's the lead for the county in a lot of things, uh, and I appreciate her work. Um, the um, uh, fact is that, uh, uh, as I said, this has a tremendous meaning to me, uh, personally. Um, uh, as the first uh, Jewish speaker of the Ohio House, uh, there was uh, was made clear to me by certain members of the uh, of the legislature that they didn't appreciate uh, a Jewish person being the speaker of the house, uh, and uh, and I felt it. Um, they, no more, no less than what many of you have felt in trying to deal with uh, the prejudice uh, that continues in the community. But uh, uh, Ludlow has always been a a lead, a, a really a sim symbolic uh, uh, place uh, that shows what can be done with uh, people living together, uh, an integrated community that's successful and that is uh, progressive. And uh, I, I have to say that a couple of the warriors uh, for civil rights are here that I uh, recognize. Uh, I saw Mary Boyle here somewhere. Uh, are you still here, Mary? And uh, Lee Trotter was here. Um, you know, both of them have, and I'm sure many others that I'm not mentioning, have been involved uh, for years and years in fighting the prejudice that still continues, that we still have to fight and still uh, 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 do what we can. Uh, and this marker uh, is so significant because it, it shows that we're, we're, still, we're still on top of this. We still... Uh, recognize there's more work to be done and we will do it. So uh, thank you all for coming out today and thank you so much to the Cleveland Restoration Society. I'm David Weiss, the mayor of Shaker Heights, and uh, I'm here uh, representing our community as well as uh, our city council. I know we have several council members, Carmilla Williams, Earl Williams, uh, Sean Malone, and uh, Jeff Isaacs from our school board. So uh, we appreciate um, you all being here. We appreciate all of you being here for this very special occasion. I have to say it's an honor and a privilege uh, to join you today on, at, at the special program. I'm extremely uh, gratified to see that the Ludlow Community Association is being recognized uh, on Cleveland's African American Civil Rights um, uh, Trail. Of course, we can't talk about Ludlow um, without um, briefly acknowledging uh, the recent loss, uh, as mentioned, of, of Kevin Lowry um, and the impact that that, had, that that has had in our community. And of course, it um, uh, pales in comparison to the loss uh, uh, to Ramona, his wife, who we keep in our uh, thoughts and our prayers. Um, so with that, uh, let me just say that um, uh, 
the restrictions and practices that established and maintains segregation here are part of our local history. Frankly, that's not a part that we're proud of. And yet, we must acknowledge it if we're going to move beyond it. And with the help of this marker, we can ensure that future generations know about the progressive, determined, and socially conscious Ludlow residents of the late 1950s and beyond who were among the first to address uh, racial integration. And in doing so, they laid the groundwork and set the framework for the frank dialogue on race that continues in Shaker Heights to this day. As a community known for and one that celebrates its diversity, the residents of Shaker Heights tend to be problem solvers by nature. We don't shy away from the tough and challenging issues of the day. In fact, just last month, for example, we had one of many, many very productive, open, and honest community conversations about diversity, equity, and inclusion in our community, facilitated by Colleen Jackson, our first ever Chief Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion Officer, who is uh, here with us uh, today as well. More than 40 people, black, white, young, old, representing all nine neighborhoods, including Ludlow, turned out to have a conversation that many people would prefer to avoid. It was productive and candid, and yes, sometimes difficult, but these conversations will guide our work in the days and years ahead. We also know that in addition to these efforts, Shaker Heights must continue its commitment to investing in its neighborhoods, which in recent years have included upgrades to its parks, tree planting, housing support programs, traffic calming, and a diversity of new infill housing construction. So while today Shaker Heights acknowledges its past shortcoming, we also know that we cannot rest on our laurels. Um, and, and what we build on are the shoulders that have come before us in this historic Ludlow um, uh, Neighborhood Association. And therefore, every day, we continue the vitally important work of protecting civil rights, promoting integration, genuinely celebrating diversity, and moving towards more meaningful inclusion. And so with this marker, this is an important reminder that we have an impressive, indeed impressive legacy to live up to, and we intend to do so. So thank you all for coming. I appreciate your opportunity to speak. I want to thank Catherine and Mary Ladd who brought this to my attention, and I am uh, appreciative of being here today. I also want to thank Gwendolyn Chapman, who have taken the time to walk me through the entire Love Low community, and also uh, gave me the history on it as well. So I am pretty to be here, and I'm Councilwoman Deborah Gray. So um, I just want to say um, good afternoon, everyone. I am very excited for the opening of the new African American Civil Rights Trail right here in Lovelow Community. I want to thank the Cleveland Restoration Society for this effort to for this effort to create an African American rights trail in Cleveland and dedicate this speech to Kevin Lowry. And I especially want to thank them for recognizing the Love Low neighborhood and the Love Low Community Association in this trail. The Civil Rights Trail in Cleveland is the first of its kind in Northern City. Congratulations to this congratulations on on this achievement. All of the sites along the trail are very historic, whether it's the Cory United Methodist Church, Huff Uprising, Glenville High School, Oliver Institutional Baptist Church, Greater Assembly Baptist Church, or the many more sites to come. There will be always be a powerful connection to our history. The history of the neighborhood is well known, but I want to celebrate and congratulate those who came before me in working in, in keeping the neighborhood a diverse and welcoming community from 1950s until today. So thank you. Good afternoon. I'm Tom Chama. I'm the immediate past chair 
of the Board of the Ohio History Connection. On behalf of the Ohio History Connection, I want to thank you for inviting us to participate in this marker dedication today. As a former resident of Shaker Heights, I am particularly proud to have the opportunity to join you. The Ohio Historical Markers Program began in 1957, and it is a program that we are extremely proud of. It is the kind of program that allows local communities to identify, honor, and commemorate the important people and events that have contributed to their past and to share those stories in a visible and lasting way. Ohio History Connection's mission is to spark discovery of Ohio stories, embrace the present, share the past, and transform the future. We strive to do this every day, but we can't do it alone. Historical markers and the people who create them, support them, and enjoy them contribute to this mission. There are now approximately 1,750 historical markers around the state, each telling a unique piece of Ohio's history. Your marker honoring Ludlow Community and Ludlow Community Association now joins other state markers in telling the story of Ohio. You are to be commended for taking the initiative to identify this important historic aspect of this community. The marker that we are dedicating today was made possible through the vision, dedication, and hard work of many people. I would really like to particularly thank Kathleen Crowther and the Cleveland Restoration Society. The Cleveland Civil Rights Trail team came together around an important Ohio story and dreamed of a way to memorialize that story. They researched and submitted the marker application, put together the funding to both purchase and install the marker and to do all the myriad unforeseen little tasks that led to today's celebration. Today, the Ludlow Community Association grows, adjoins the growing Cleveland Civil Rights Trail. The Ohio History Connection's role was to guide and advise through the process by helping them to research and refine the final marker text you read here and to follow the marker through its production at Siwa Studios in Marietta. It was our real pleasure to partner with you to tell this important story of Ohio's history. To mark this special occasion, I am proud to present a commendation from the Ohio History Connections Executive Director, Megan Wood, and the Board of Trustees to the uh, Restoration Society uh, for the work that you have done today. Kathleen? Thank you, Kathleen. Thank you. And finally, I'm very proud on behalf of the uh, governor and lieutenant governor of the state of Ohio uh, to present uh, a commendation uh, to the Ludlow community relative to this historic marker. Perhaps uh, the president of the association could accept the uh, this award. Uh, this commendation. Thank you very much. Thank you, Thank, you. Thank you again for inviting the Ohio History Connection to be part of your community's history and to participate in this dedication. Enjoy your new marker and its important Ohio story. Thank you. Okay, we're almost at the exciting moments. I'd like to also recognize Meredith Turner, who is a county councilwoman, uh, and Kent Smith, who is our state representative in the 8th District, going to the State Senate. And uh, of course, Council President Blaine Griffin, he is here. Thank you. Did, uh, did you want to say something, uh, Councilwoman? Okay. Good evening. Good evening to all the dignitaries and 
distinguished people in the audience today, to the families and members of the Ludlow Community Association. Um, Mr. Chairman, I don't know if you remember me from my time in Senator Brown's office, president of Hiram College. Yeah. Hello, sir. <laughs> County Executive Butish. Um, so I am a proud resident of the Ludlow community, and I am honored to be present as we unveil the Ohio Historic Marker, mem memorializing the important role our community played in the fight for civil rights for black residents. Thank you to um, Sarah Parks Jackson for including me in this very important event. In many ways, Shaker Heights, oh, and to my mayor, Mayor Weiss, um, here in Shaker Heights, where you at, Mayor, mayor Weiss? <laughs> Kid, my mayor. In many ways, Shaker Heights, Northeast Ohio, and this country have made great strides in the civil rights movement. In 1956, we elected Dr. Winston Ritchie, a dentist, a realtor, and leader of innovative integration programs. Dr. Ritchie and his family were among the first African Americans to move to the Ludlow neighborhood, which straddles Cleveland and Shaker. He and his wife, Beatrice, also co-founded the Ludlow Community Association, which has gained worldwide notice for promoting integration. We elected Louis Stokes as Ohio's first black congressman. We elected Barack Obama as this nation's first black president. And as your county council representative, I am ecstatic that the county has publicly recognized that racism is a public health crisis. While strides have been made, it is important to note two things, the work of those who came before us and the reality that we still have more miles to travel before we can claim that racism has been eliminated in America. In the 1950s, Shaker Heights was a beacon for black professionals. Court rulings banned racially restrictive deed covenants and trailblazers like John and Dorothy Pegg chose Corby Road and this Ludlow neighborhood as their residence. Their suburban existence was forever stained when a bomb exploded in their garage in 1956. Many would flee this overt sign of hatred and bigotry. Shaker Heights and Ludlow did not. They banded together formed the Ludlow Community Association in 1957 and fought for protection of their community and worked to develop and foster an integrated community. The LCA selected William Percy as its first black president in 1964. I was born in 1973. <laughs> However, the process of implementing pro-integrative policies in Shaker Heights has not been easy, nor has it been without an ongoing challenge. While redlining real estate practices may have banned, may be banned by court order, access to lending still disproportionately impacts black residents. We should all proudly acknowledge the role that the Pegg family and the LCA have played in fighting for equality in our neighborhood. But we cannot ignore that work still needs to be completed. In the 1990s, Cleveland was recognized as the second most segregated real estate market in the United States. Certainly, Shaker, Height and the, Shaker Heights and the Ludlow neighborhood are better in this analysis, but all too often, the ancillary aspects of what a community is are still drastically different for black residents than they are for our white neighbors. Wealth disparities, access to mortgage services, even educational outcomes at Shaker, at Shaker Heights schools, which I am a proud graduate, and I see my former um, classmates, Ramona and Kevin and Arian around here somewhere. Um, but there have been different results for different races, and we can and we must do better. But today, we honor the legacy of those who came before us, those who were on the front line of the civil rights movement in this country, this city, this neighborhood. Thank you for including me in this historic event, and thank you to all who are present here today. I am honored to be the, a first-generation college graduate, the daughter of a union electrician and steel worker who moved to Shaker Heights in 1985, seeking a better life for her children. I'm proud to be your county council representative and your neighbor. Thank you. Right, we are now going to turn the program over to the people from Ludlow, uh, the Ludlow Community Association. We will first hear from Susan Rotatori, the current co-president, and then Versi Sharp, who is um, a friend uh, of Kevin Lowry, who we would have hoped be here, 
and then we will unveil and Gwen Chapman will read uh, the marker from the mic. So the moment is almost here. <laughs> Susan. Hello, welcome everyone. Uh, I'm Susan Rotatori and I'm the co-president of the Ludlow Association. I would like to share some inspiring words from Dr. Tom Chalemsky, a past president of LCA. His career took him out of state, but his heart remains in the neighborhood. Gwen Chapman, Luis Puello, and I were co-presidents of the neighborhood organization. With great help with Ken Kovach and others, we orchestrated the 50th anniversary of LCA. Some of the past presidents even flew in from, for the recollections. Our family found out how unique Ludlow is when we moved away to Milwaukee. A passion for the community does not run through their veins. At this time, when the uniqueness of Ludlow is being recognized yet again with the integration of the historical civil rights trail marker, count yourselves blessed to be in a place where people are willing to engage, to have, to have joy, to be together, and even sometimes to get mad because the community matters to them. This is a unique place in the United States. Enjoy it, grow it, and of all, I'm so thankful I was part of it." Unquote. I think Tom's words speak for all of us. The integration movement that was first set into motion in our neighborhood was a catalyst for others and has been followed by other neighborhoods in Shaker and in cities across the country. A bombing incident that was meant to frighten others away galvanized a neighborhood and is now being recognized by the Civil Rights Trail Marker. The LCA is proud to be part of this and will continue to keep this neighborhood growing strong. Uh, I would now like to recognize uh, some LCA pioneers and past leaders. When I call your name, please stand and the Restoration Society will bring you a memento to you. Um, we have Martha Chubberly, Chubberly, Cubberly, Cubberly. Is Martha here? Yes. Hi, Martha. Uh, Gwen Chapman. Melda Graves. Uh, Jane Hill. There's Jane's over there. Ken and Marianne Kovach. They were both presidents, but not at the same time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's too much in one household. <laughs> Carolyn Milter. Oh, here she is. Ruth Ann Vance Lane. Oh, she's. She's right over here. Ruth Ann. Yeah. Uh, Linda Spartrino. Lid oh, hi, Linda. And I haven't seen it. Julie Donaldson. There's Julie right here in the front. And my last person is uh, Leonard Lieberger. And he was instrumental in running the Ludlow Community uh, Company. And he provided loans and second mortgages for people who need assistance for wanting to move into this uh, unique area. So without him and the foresight of those people that founded the Ludlow Company, a lot of people would not have been able to move here. Um, I would also like to recognize some additional past uh, presidents. Um, Judge Lauren Moore Seegers was here, but she did have to leave early. Uh, Kevin McDermott is here. And uh, is Ramona Lowry here? Ramona's here. Um, 
former wife of uh, the wife of, the, of our former president, uh, Kevin Lowry. So, um, and we also have the, uh, finally, I would like to recognize the current LCA boards, uh, board members, and, and continue the LCA mission today. Penny Croom, Morris, Norris Pack, Joanne Blanchard, Brian Seegers, and me. And I also would not be a good president if I didn't mention we also have membership forms over at the <laughs> table uh, for those who would like to join. So thank you very much for coming and celebrating this wonderful opportunity that's before us. Thank you. I am Versi Sharp, lifetime friend of the late past president of the LCA. And when I was asked to do this, I said, man, let me see how I can tie Kevin to this marker. And it was kind of easy because being little kids, we grew up, we've known each other since we were about three or four years old. Kevin was always a change agent. He was always looking to change and improve anything that he could. He was always an advocate for anything that was right, whether it was civil rights, equal rights, women rights, you name it. Um, he always thought he had a right to my thing. So he just had this thing for <laughs> rights. Um, he advocated for the underdog, the underrepresented, the underpaid, the misunderstood. That's who Kevin was. So to talk about this marker and how it tied to Kevin is relatively easy because he always sought to level the playing field. He wanted to franchise the disenfranchised, integrate the segregated, which is why this project was so um, passionate for him. Kevin moved into this neighborhood in 1996 and immediately made himself known to all. The birth of his children triggered the desire to ensure that his neighborhood represented his own ideals, so he immediately got involved in community uh, engagement and involvement. And he wanted to make sure that it mirrored what he believed. So to make sure, things like this became his passion. He advocated for the opening of the Ludlow School for Children, helped at all civic events, and was present for all meetings. And he did not hesitate to bring his children, even when they were still in strollers. He would bring them because that was his way of teaching his children to be community pillars, pillars in their community, advocates for change, and to also represent all things that were right. So this um, marker was his last project. He was, and passion isn't a strong enough word to say what it meant to him. So let's go back. If Kevin was around in 1956 when the Peg's home was bombed, Kevin would have done a few things. First of all, he would have been running around with a bucket of water trying to put out the fire. <laughs> he would have offered them refuge into his own home because that's the type of person Kevin was. And this, that bombing of their home would have catapulted him into the civil rights movement because that would have been Kevin's way of righting the wrongs, integrating the Ludlow neighborhood. He would have been one of those founding members of the Ludlow Community Association. So let's fast forward. If Kevin was here today, he'd be running around grinning from ear to ear, congratulating everyone else as if he didn't have anything to do with this. He'd be handing out attaboys and handshakes and congr congratulatory sentiments. But today, I'm overjoyed. Although posthumously, Kevin is getting his pat on the back, his handshake, his attaboy, because this was a much um, deserved uh, a commemoration to him because he put so much into it. All those uh, emails and phone calls and late nights and meetings and away from his kids, away from his wife, it all paid off because it just did not benefit Kevin and his family. This is a benefit to the black community, to our city, to the Ludlow community, to the civil rights um, movement, period. So, since this ceremony is such a culmination of his vision, his unrelenting dexterity to get the project finished, it's finished. And I'm sure Kevin is smiling down today, <laughs> thanking us all for being here on this cold day. So in July, at Kevin's very premature and untimely death, I remember sitting in my friend's funeral, and I felt this 
overwhelming feeling of respect for him and deep admiration because I heard all these people speaking and I'm thinking, man, Kevin was moving in silence. He was doing all these things and all you ever seen was big smiles and hey V, come over and let's eat. That's all you would hear. Not knowing all this was going on with him. But I realized Kevin was using all of his gifts. And as the commissioner said, the mayor said earlier, um, I was resting on my laurels and I sat in his funeral and I got this fire and I was saying, I got to do more. Um, Kevin is beating me at this. I never let Kevin beat me. <laughs> Kevin is winning at this thing. He's out here in the community. He's moving. He's shaking. He's doing things. And I was so proud, yet it made me um, a little competitive because I sat there and I was thinking, I need to be more like him. I left his funeral feeling like I needed to do more. I needed to read more. I needed to write more. I needed to think more. I needed to dream more. I needed to pursue more. I needed to do more in my family, in my church, in my community, in my city. If all of us could walk away with just a little part of that, then Kevin's death is not in vain. So, I'm gonna do more in my community, in my city, in the presence of my children, and mostly important, I'm gonna do more in the presence of my God. So I thank you all. The family of Kevin Lowry thanks you. And I think we should all just say, let's do more. Ludlow is a neighborhood straddling Shaker Heights and Cleveland. Was developed in 1905 by Otis and Manis Van Swearensen. By 1925, they imposed restrictive deeds, covenants, that racially excluded black homes ownership in the community. In 1948, the Supreme Court ruled in Shelley versus Kramer that such covenant violates the Equal Protection Clause of the 14th Amendment. As a result, affluent African-American professionals began to buy homes in the Ludlow area, seeking the suburban atmosphere and good schools for their families. While illegally, the Van Swerns and Company continued to require prospective African-American buyers to gain approval from neighborhoods before they could purchase homes. Subsequently, the idea of African-American families moving into Ludlow created white flights as realtors perpetuated unfound fears that property values would decline in order to blockbuster and purchase properties at depressed prices. Excuse me. On January 3rd, 1956, a bomb exploded in the garage of the black-owned home under construction on Corby Road. For sale signs cropped up as realtors panicked longtime residents and began refusing to show Ludlow homes to white buyers. The bombing sp sparked the turning out point in Ludlow integration. Black and white neighbors gathered in each other's home to build trust and a neighborhood coalition was created called the Ludlow Community Association in 1957. Incorporated in 1959, Ludlow Community Association worked to stem blockbusting and encourage whites to remain and purchase homes in Ludlow. Influenced by the civil rights movement and the nationwide push for integration, Ludlow Community Association became a national model for community activism toward fair housing. It stemmed the tide of white flight and helped to maintain a well-balanced, integrated Ludlow neighborhood for more than 30 years. Ooh, ooh, ooh.